related to my Oklahoma Sooner preview for 2015. I did intend on having this preview a few days before kickoff. Of course, I didn't intend on having it this late, but... You know, I'm going to blame that on personal computer internet issues. Had some issues uh, getting connected, but that has been restored. So I thank you for being patient with me um, for getting this report on a little later than I would have wanted. But I did intend on having this report on a few days before just because I wanted to see what the depth chart was going to look like for the Sooners, how they were going to look one and two deep. So that way the show would definitely have that updated appeal to it. Well, last year, the Sooners, I don't know what was appealing about 8-5. and five. I mean, nothing considering the fact that this team was expected to win the Big 12. They were also expected by some to play in the inaugural four-team college football playoff. And that dream took a big hit when they lost to TCU um, early in the season. And then two weeks later, uh, their dream was officially confirmed as not going to happen when Kansas State handed OU their second loss of the season. And then... The Baylor blowout, the Oklahoma State stunning loss, and then losing the uh, Russell Athletic Bowl to Clemson. That just poured salt on the wound on an 8-5 and five season. But I'll tell you this, though. I thought the most massive coaching changes during this offseason, because you knew changes had to be made, I thought it was going to be with the defense. And really, it turned out that the offense had the bigger changes of the two sides. Uh, we know this because Jay Norvell, co-offensive coordinator, got fired at the end of the year. And then Josh Heupel got fired not long after that. So... New offense, that means say goodbye to the multiple no huddle and say hello to the air raid attack, similar to what Texas A&M runs, and also enter Lincoln Riley, who now becomes the offensive coordinator. And I'll say this, at East Carolina, they were very successful under this offense and racked up a lot of yardage. Of course, the big thing about the Sooners last year, it was their ground attack that really spoke volumes because they were 11th in the country and running the ball. And Samaj P. Ryan was a big reason why, the biggest surprise last year, no doubt, for Oklahoma football. P. Ryan returns for his sophomore year, over 1,700 yards in rushing. And, by the way, um, a 20-plus touchdown season for this guy, 6.5 yards per carry. And the NCAA all-time leader for most rushing yards in one game did that against Kansas with well over 420 yards on the ground. And you'll also see, two P. Ryan line up in the slot. Uh, this is the one thing about the air raid attack. The running backs are used. I mean, they'll still run the ball, but you'll also see the running backs um, as receivers, and like I said, they'll line up in the slot. That will really be the case for Joe Mixon. Um, we get to see what he's all about, of course. I, I think he's fortunate that he's still in Oklahoma sooner. You know, some programs would have booted him out the door after uh, what happened last year. It's never, ever okay to hit a woman, okay? It's never okay, and that's what he did uh, last year. Well, we never saw the tape publicly. Um, who knows what his future with OU would be if if we had. Um, but the thing about Joe Mixon, you know, he stuck around last year. and He was suspended for the year but didn't leave. And now uh, we get to see what this guy can do. Um, as Mixon, you know, five-star recruit, you know, uh, the year before last out of California, admits that the Alabama victory in the Sugar Bowl was what convinced him to come to Oklahoma. Uh, Mixon quick, fast, and can catch the ball and make things happen. He is going to be their big playmaker, in my opinion. So you got, you know, quality depth at running back. And one thing I was surprised when I looked at the depth chart, no Alex Ross. I mean, he's going to be used on kickoffs, you know, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Ross is more of the more of the north-south type runner, terrific speed, quickness. I wouldn't say that, but he definitely has that speed element to him. But right now, he's not on the top three depth chart. Number three on for the running backs is Daniel Brooks. You know, Daniel Brooks, we'll see him play uh, this season, and um, he's a junior. The H-back position, Dimitri Flowers will occupy that spot. Now, remember the Sooners as far as the ground attack uh, goes. Um, you know, we didn't really see him run the ball much, but Eric Rukowski, uh, Rukowski you know, your valuable blocking back, uh, he's moved on now. Um, he was uh, drafted um, late in the NFL draft uh, this past spring. Of course, we got to talk about other elements of that backfield. That's the quarterback, and from what I heard, it wasn't even close as far as who won the starting job. Went to Baker Mayfield. Now, Mayfield, two years ago, Texas Tech, Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year. He was a walk-on, spectacular. but when he got hurt, Davis Webb took over, and um, Mayfield never got his job back. Came to Oklahoma last year, was hoping to play. 
that didn't happen. It's in the amazing though when you think about it that two of the biggest headliners this year potentially for Oklahoma offensively were two guys that were on the roster last year in Mayfield and Joe Mixon, yet neither one of them played a down a year ago. They have yet to play a down for the Sooners, and yet they're big-time names. We'll see how uh, Mayfield does. He did take quite a few sacks when he was at Texas Tech, uh, but the thing is, uh, completion percentage-wise, um, not bad at all, 64% when he was with the Red Raiders. We'll see how he does because he hasn't played a game in two years, and backing him up, Trevor Knight, we know, the great things he did in late 2013, but last year uh, did struggle uh, through quite a few picks. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you never want to see anybody get hurt at all, but took a devastating injury um, against Baylor, you know, came back for the bowl game against Clemson. I'm not so sure if that was a good idea at all. Um, he is a, a man of terrific character, though. He is a leader, a co-captain, but right now he's playing second fiddle to Baker Mayfield. And um, you also have Cody Thomas, the third stringer. We saw him play a little bit last year after the night injury. We saw him uh, lead OU to victory over uh, Texas Tech in Lubbock. Talking about the receivers, Sterling Shepard. Boy, it's great to have this guy. Game number eight last year, though, he was on his way to a 1,000-yard receiving season. Then the hamstring pull occurred against Iowa State, and his season was pretty much wrecked after that. So he probably is going to have maybe a 1,300-yard receiving season. I'm just going to say that conservatively because they still had plenty of games to go, maybe 1,400. But Shepard now enters his senior year. He will be the number one option for Baker Mayfield. And another guy that you'll have that has experience too, uh, Deron Neal, could he be that number two guy after a 42-catch, 513-yard season? But the other two receivers as this air raid attack, remember this is the type of attack where the quarterback doesn't need a whole lot of time to throw the ball, and the Sooners last year were good as far as pass protection, number one in the country when it came to fewest sacks allowed. And this offense certainly is going to help those guys up front. Now, talking about the other receivers, D.D. Westbrook and Jarvis Baxter, both junior college players, as a matter of fact, Baxter, a walk-on Juco player, and now they will occupy the other two starting spots. You'll see four receivers a lot of time from this air raid attack. Um, but that's the thing about the Sooners. You know, they're going to be young as far as receivers, talented, potential, but inexperienced in at least two of those spots. And none of the starting receivers, by the way, um, are six feet taller, you know, or, or taller than six feet. Um, it's not a tall group at all, but they are athletic and they can find ways to get open. Offensive line is the biggest concern for the Sooners entering this year. There's no question about that because of the fact that you lost four of them. You know, and two of them, by the way, were NFL draft picks in Darrell Williams and, and Tyrus Thompson. But you also lose Adam Shedd and Tyler Evans. So as far as legitimate experience, by the way, uh, you have one guy in Ty Darlington at the center spot entering his senior year. And also to Nila Kazatati. Um, he will play at right guard. Between them, 14 starts and 12 starts. That's 26 starts right there, and that's it as far as starting experience for your offensive line as opposed to what you've had uh, with the four guys who are no longer there, 137 combined starts. So you lose a lot of experience, and now the other three spots occupied by the Sooners are by guys who've never started a game before the OU, including Josiah St. John. He's a senior at 308 pounds. He's been around the program, but now he'll get a chance to headline from right tackle. And at the left tackle position, they're going to go with the redshirt freshman in Orlando Brown. This was a bit of a surprise. Right now, hitting the depth chart of uh, Derek Forniak, who we know will play. Both, by the way, are 6 feet 8 inches tall. And rounding out the lineman, uh, left guard, you'll have uh, Jonathan Alvarez, just a sophomore at 297. Be a big offensive line, but for the most part inexperienced. And the main thing for Oklahoma, they could ill afford any injuries at all. Even one could really throw things into a major kink, and you get several, and it's going to look like the 2009 Sooners where that offensive line was injury depleted, and at one point they were playing walk-ons. It got that dire. And it doesn't help, too, that one of their backups at tackle, Kenyon Frazon, you know, suspended indefinitely for um, violation of team rules. So they are very thin as far as quality depth. Um, they're already kind of thin as far as experience as it is. Offensive line is going to be the big thing. I'll be curious to see how well they run block, pass protection, because it is the air raid attack. I think they'll be fine, but they got to stay healthy. Looking at defense last year um, against the run, they were not bad at all, eighth in the country. But remember, they took on a lot of teams last year that did not make the run, the forte of their offense. Because pass defense was 120th in the country. I've never seen a Sooner defense have as many blown coverages 
or brain lapses as this one did. It was not well coached. At the same time, though, the players did not execute, period. Were there injuries? There were some, but really it was just lack of execution, especially against those pass-happy teams. We'll start with the defensive line. Charles Tapper at defensive tackle, 25 stops a year ago, three sacks. Uh, you return him, and he's really the only uh, true experienced guy that you have up front, let's face it, uh, because you lose uh, several quality players, including uh, Chuka Nadale. You know, you lose a second-round draft pick in Jordan Phillips and a third-round pick in Genio Grissom on that defensive inside. So I'm not saying that they're starting from scratch completely because there is some experience back, but losing Nadale and Phillips and Grissom does not help your cause at all. So we'll see uh, the Mats play. On the defensive tackle side, We're talking about Matt uh, Diamond, um, who will alternate time with Charles Walker, and also to uh, Matt Romar, the sophomore, at the other defensive tackle spot. Now, for the Sooners, they're listed at a 4-3 type defense, but you're going to see them run nickelbacks, and you're also going to see two Eric Stryker at defensive end. He's listed, though, as an outside linebacker, so he'll play both spots. And, of course, when it comes to rushing the QB, not too many guys are better than um, Eric Stryker. Last year, you know, nine sacks. We'll see if he's utilized more as a blitzer when he is. Uh, Big-time things happen. Uh, the other um, outside linebacker, when they do run – uh, with two, uh, Devontae Bond entering his senior year as well. And your inside linebackers, I, I think this is one of the best linebacking cores in all of the country because of the experience and the proven factor. Jordan Evans at one side, Frank Shannon. We mentioned earlier Joe Mixon's, you know, off the field issues. Well, Frank Shannon has had, you know, you know, just as big of issues off the field. Didn't play last year, and he's back this year for his final year. And Right now, he's playing as a backup, but you know he'll be a part of the linebacking rotation. Dominic Alexander, from what I've heard, um, as good as he was last year, could be even better this year because he has come in even in better shape and he'll play the other inside linebacker spot. So your linebacker core set. Secondary, though, other than offensive line, the biggest concern. And also, to remember, there is not one single senior from the secondary. They have 11 players in the defensive backfield on the roster. None of them are upperclassmen. That includes Zach Sanchez back for his um, junior year. And a year ago, of course, he was in the right spot at the right time. The Sooners last year had nine interceptions, and Sanchez had six of them. You're seeing him in All-American uh, type status in these preseason magazines. But he does at times um, have struggles against some of the fastest receivers in, in the game. Like, for example, last year against West Virginia, he was constantly getting burned. So, you know, he's not with his faults, but he's also, too, a terrific tackler. Not much in size at 5'11", but, again, at times seems to be in the right spot at the right time. That interception return for a touchdown against Texas last year was vital in that victory. The other corner will be occupied uh, by Jordan Thomas. Um, he's just a sophomore. And at strong safety, Ahmad Thomas from uh, Miami Central. They've produced um, at least 10 players in the NFL, including Willis McGahee and Ahmad Thomas. So he knows what it's like to come from a high-established high school of tradition. So Ahmad Thomas played, he's played since his freshman year. You'll have him for this, his junior year. And at a free safety, Hattari Bird, um, you have experience there as a junior. And Stephen Parker, when they do go five defensive backs, he'll be your nickelback, and he definitely has gotten better uh, since that freshman year where he got really thrown into the fire and really had to learn the hard way on how to play, you know, defensive back on the major college level. But um, he's back. Uh, Stephen Parker is the outstanding talent from Jinx High School. The backups for Oklahoma as far as the secondary, there are mostly freshmen, okay? Four freshman backups as far as the depth chart goes. Three of them are true freshmen. So you talk about can't afford any injuries on that offensive side as far as the line. Secondary, I think, is just as important. And we'll see if Mike Stoops can get this defensive squad playing at an acceptable level. Because, again, last year they were constantly getting torched um, against those pass-happy teams. Austin Seifert, it looks like he's going to be your punter and also to your place kicker. He's going to handle double duties, and he is the only true freshman listed as a starter. And I don't have a problem with that. And it, it really is a shame how Honeycutt's career ended last year where he was ma missing several kicks, including some critical ones at pivotal times. And I'm not saying he costed OU games, but certainly the misses didn't help OU's cost in trying to beat Kansas State and beat Oklahoma State, in which they uh, failed to do both times. So, so Austin Seifert will handle the kicking and punting duties. And don't have to worry about kickoff returns. They're solidified um, in that area with the likes of uh, Alex Ross, 
kick return. He's probably an All-American in that department. Saw him run one back last year against West Virginia and also against Texas. Um, and both of those plays were, were game changers in the grand scheme of things. One more thing, too. Punt returning, and I saw Sterling Shepard as the number one name on the depth chart. I'm not so sure you want to put your best receiver in that position. They also have D.D. Westbrook listed as a potential punt returner, too. Um, we all know that, that Shepard had the hamstring pull a year ago. Um, but also, too, his frame just may not be just absolutely ideal for, for punt returning. But that's what they're going to go with, it looks like, for the opener against Akron. So, you know, Sterling Shepard's going to be one busy guy. Schedule for the Sooners, Akron should be a win. That's coming up in a couple of days. And then the Tennessee game, OU right now is a three-and-a-half-point underdog in Knoxville, Tennessee, returns nearly everybody. That will be a difficult chore for the Sooners. And then Tulsa the following week, that should be a layup. The bye week before Big 12 play against a West Virginia team, whom defensively should be better. And, of course, offensively, they've been successful under Dana Holgerson. The following week, Texas, and speaking of great defenses, they might be the best defense in the Big 12. They certainly were last year, but offensively at quarterback, um, I still think they have issues there, does Texas, but that should be one of those uh, toss-up games in Dallas, the way it looks right now. K-State the following week, the Wildcats, and this is the funny thing, Bob Stoops has never lost as head coach of Oklahoma in Manhattan, a perfect 5-0. It's playing Kansas State at home that's given him the problems, if you can believe that. But K-State certainly will not be an automatic W. Oh, you will have to earn that one at the Little Apple. And then we get into the second half of the schedule, Texas Tech at home, and then Kansas on the road, Iowa State at home. That should be 3-for-3 three three right there for Oklahoma. The final three games, it is a gauntlet. November 14th at Baylor. We know how good they are. Oh, you found that out the hard way last year, losing by 34 in Norman. And then TCU, you get them at home, though. TCU had a dramatic turnaround. And, of course, they changed their offense up. And you, you saw the results in a 12 and one year for Javon Boykin and the guys from Fort Worth. And you close out the year at Oklahoma State. If that game doesn't get your attention, then none of them will. Cowboys were mediocre last year, and they still beat Oklahoma. And it won't be easy for the Sooners this time either, games in Stillwater. I think OU will be better because I do like this air raid attack by the Sooners um, because it is something different. they got to get the passing game going, get Sterling Shepard um, involved big time, and I do think the running backs will be utilized heavily. My biggest concern is the offensive line. Um, not that they're not good, but there is some inexperience there, and, of course, lack of proven depth. That's always going to make you cross your fingers. And defensively, they have to quit having brain farts when it comes to coverage because – too many times we saw Oklahoma give up plays of about 30 yards or more through the air. That's unacceptable for even a small college team, much less a major school like Oklahoma trying to contend for conference championships. Can't do that if you're giving up big plays on a consistent basis. Sooners, I think, will be better. I like to say they're going to win the Big 12, but... I have to be honest with you, I still think they're a cut below Baylor and TCU. It'll be a better year for Oklahoma, but not a championship year. 9-3 and three is my prediction. Third place in the Big 12. And I do think with the bowl win, double-digit winning season is in order, and it's an improvement. They just right now are not on that level as Baylor or TCU. And if you think they are, then I'm not sure what you're seeing that I and a lot of other people see. It'll be a nice year for the Sooners. I'm just not thinking it's going to be championship caliber type season. That's my look at the Sooners on this extensive preview of Oklahoma. Thanks.